Okay, so um, first of all, we have uh, new stickers. Come find me if anybody wants a sticker, these hex ones right here. Anyway, um, so I'm going to talk about Crossref clients. So if you want to, um, if you want to, if you have your computer out, your phone, it looks good on mobile too. Um, there's a link for the talk, and anything in that sort of light blue color is a link, so you can go deep, you know, uh, go find out more about any of the things that are linked to. Uh, I'm just, just talking about what, what license this is. Uh, so why programmatic clients? Um, so first of all, there's going there's to be a bunch of reasons here. Uh, the first one I think is it's just easier. When n is greater than a few. So when n meaning sample size of let's say you want to do, uh, do something with a widget, and let's say you want to do it three times, uh, maybe that's fine, but maybe at 15 times you get really sick of it. And so um, doing things programmatically uh, is just a lot easier when you have to do it more than a few times. Uh, it facilitates reproducibility. So, so doing things programmatically isn't reproduce, it doesn't define reproducibility, but it, it, it certainly uh, facilitates it. Um, and it's perhaps less error prone. I mean, you can obviously write bad code and buggy code, um, but if, if you can imagine if you're doing something in a web interface, 50 times versus writing code once that does, um, let's say you have 50 DOIs and you want to do something with each DOI. If you're doing that programmatically, you can write one set of code that should do exactly the same thing every time. Um, and it should be scalable. And we've talked, I just said something about, you know, going from, you know, sample size of, of 5 to 50 or whatever. Uh, you know, the same code with a, a, some minor tweaks should be able to do the same exact thing for 10 DOIs as 10 thousand DOIs. Um, and, I, and I'm going to make the possibly um, controversial claim that perhaps all science should be done programmatically. Um, and I, I know I didn't do this when I was in grad school, but I didn't, I didn't know how to do that. <laughs> but I, I certainly would now. Um, and, and so I think these programmatic clients that we're working on for to interact with uh, Crossref APIs are, will hopefully facilitate people doing whatever research they're doing with uh, Crossref data uh, doing that programmatically. Um, so, so the idea, uh, so I'm going to talk about sort of low-level clients. And by low-level, I mean these are sort of, uh, they're not trying to tackle the high-level use cases. Um, and I'll, I'll mention some use cases in a second. But I'm trying to sort of build a foundation that we can uh, build on top of, that we can, that other people or, or myself included can build more specific uh, clients for specific use cases on, on top of the low-level clients. Um, and hopefully building these, building these clients once, and hopefully well, uh, will prevent wheel, uh, wheel rebuilding. So, you know, if I've searched um, code repositories like GitHub before uh, for, you know, api.crossrib.org, and a whole bunch of people have rewritten scripts over and over again for getting some Crossrib data and you know, they shouldn't have to do that. They should just be able to install a client library in their programming language of choice uh, and be off. And so, so what are the users of different, uh, different languages? So these, this is totally anecdotal. I, there's no data behind this at all. Um, but for R, R is heavily used in academia, so I know that's a, that's a big one. Um, journalists, I'm not sure, sure, but I know there are some. Uh, government, I know there's quite a bit of use in, at least uh, I know about USGS and EPA uh, are heavy users of R. Um, Python is heavily used in academia, definitely used a lot in uh, web development uh, apps. Uh, Ruby, the same, app and web development, not so much used in, in science as far as I know. I, I know it is used some in science. Um, and then there's um, command line and JavaScript. JavaScript mostly sort of app, web, dev. Although there's a growing community of uh, people doing JavaScript things uh, for research. Um, so some of the use cases, uh, text mining is an obvious one, especially with the, the Crossref TDM program. Um, getting uh, and mining supplementary material. So I, I won't talk about, show an example of that or anything, but there's a link there if you want to see an example. Um, where I've worked, I work on an R client for uh, Crossref and, um, and other sources of um, scholarly metadata. And we're trying to solve a, 
a sort of very messy problem of how do I programmatically get supplemental uh, data. So these can be, you know, Word files and PowerPoint files and, and just a mess. Uh, so we're trying to help people solve that. Um, so that's another use case. Uh, metadata itself, you know, not even with, even without full text. There's a lot of lot of things you can do with that. Um, extracting identifiers and full text. Let's say you got full text and you, there's taxonomic identifiers from any one of the many taxonomic um, data providers, and you want to pull out all those and then do something with those. Um, content negotiation. Um, you have a DUI and you want to get a reference in any one of many formats. Um, Crosswalking identifiers. Um, you want to go from a DOI to a PubMed ID, perhaps. Um, and then there's a whole bunch of use cases that we're surely not thinking of. Um, so what I've been doing is uh, I've been working on uh, these sort of low-level clients for R, um, Ruby, and the CLI, so command line interface, uh, is part of that Ruby client, um, and then Python as well. And then there's a, uh, there's a JavaScript client that I, I don't make, but it, it, it does exist <laughs> if you want to find that on Google. And um, I'd be definitely, uh, I'd love to get any feedback or bug reports. Um, and th those links that you see there in the, in the blue will uh, link to the, the GitHub repositories where you can file bug reports, um, use cases, uh, any kind of feedback. Um, and then, Right, so um, each of the packages is on the, uh, each of these clients is on the official sort of distribution network for uh, the specific programming language. And so this is uh, PyPy for Python, and so you can just do a um, pip install. Oh, this is, this is GBIF. <laughs> I think I put the wrong link in there. Um, but anyway, I should change that to Habanero. Uh, and then this is the one for um, Serrano is the name of the uh, the Ruby Ruby gem, and so you can do gem install Serrano. And then the R library is at the we call it CRAN, uh, the Comprehensive R Archive Network, and that's uh, and within R you can um, install that pretty easily. Um, and each of those pages has links to, to more official documentation, et cetera. Um, so, so I'm going to talk a bit about the low-level clients, but I'm briefly going to mention that there, there already are already some sort of higher-level clients uh, in the work. So I maintain a client for R called Full Text, and it pulls in um, uh, Crossref's API, uh, search API, as well as working with PLOS's search API and uh, um, the Entrez from NCBI. Uh, and various other APIs to try and have a one-stop shop for text mining. Um, and uh, so that's, that's one sort of higher-level use case that we're trying to, to make really nice. Um, and then in Ruby, I started a sort of uh, text mining equivalent of, of that thing in R in Ruby, but I sort of started working on these low-level clients, and I'm going to... So that's not really that usable yet, but hopefully that'll be, that'll be usable soon. Um, so the idea with these low-level clients is that uh, I want the, the sort of the client API or, or the user interface to that client to be similar-ish across clients. Um, that we want them to be idiomatic to the particular programming language, but they, they all follow a similar sort of pattern. And so the, the, the Crossref Search API has all these routes, right, um, that we've heard about in the workshop today. Uh, works, members, funders, uh, journals, types, licenses, et cetera. And, um, and each of the clients has has methods for each for using each of those routes, and so for example, the members route um, in R after loading the, the package, we could just do CR members and, and search for member 98. Uh, in Ruby, we just do Serrano dot members, Python CR dot members, and uh, on the CLI, after you install the Ruby client, then you do Serrano members 98. And so they're, they're, you know, there's slight differences, but they're relatively similar in, in how they in how they work. Um, and then each of the clients have a variety of other methods. It's sort of a grab bag. Um, 
uh, the DOI, getting a DOI minting agency is part of the Crossref search API, but we provide that as a separate method in case you're just, your use case is, I want to know who minted this, this DOI. Uh, and then we have a, a nice function for getting a random set of DOIs, which is also part of the Crossref search API, um, but we just make that sort of an, an easy use case uh, to do. Uh, content negotiation is another thing, so in all those clients, R, Ruby, and Python, you can you can get your references in any kind of format you want. Uh, getting full text is is is, a, is harder. Is a, it's going to take a while to really solve that problem, but there's rudimentary bits of that in each each client. Um, and then getting citation count is um, using some of the older Crossref APIs. Uh, it's not in the the newer API. But. Um, so installation uh, is pretty easy if you're in R. Uh, install.packages are crossref, uh, and then you just load that by calling the function library. Uh, and then in Python, if you're in your shell, pip install habanero, uh, and then import habanero once you're in your Python REPL. Uh, Ruby is gem install Serrano, uh, and then require Serrano. And then on the command line, after you install Ruby, you just do um, Serrano, and then it'll start, you know, you execute, and then it'll give you a bunch of help that you can, uh, that you can use to to use it. And so I'm going to show a tiny bit of code. I'm not going to demo anything live so we don't have to deal with breakage, but just to sort of show you how, how easy it can be. And so um, this use case is let's get orchids across many papers. So we, we're in R, we, lo we load our crossref. We use this function crworks and we filter for, um, if I can make this any bigger. So we filter for records that, uh, works that have uh, orchids in their metadata. And then we limit it to 10, and then we do a little bit of magic to filter out down to the author element and down to those that have orchids. And then here we have a bunch of uh, orchid IDs now that we can then use to explore, possibly use a client to explore orchids metadata. Um, so that's, that's, that was relatively easy. And a mining example, um, also in R, so I mentioned that full text library. If we want to do... Um, so in this work in this workflow example, we use this function ft search to search for articles, search for works, and this time we're searching uh, for articles in um, from the publisher plus. Uh, and then we add some other metadata to um, say we want um, full papers that are research articles. And then once we get that blob back, we're going to say use this function ft get that will actually get those papers. We'll get the full text in XML format. And then we get that blob full underscore text, and we pass that to a function called chunks, which we can say, which has some smart logic to say, hey, I want to get references, and it'll just pull out the references, or I want to get permissions, and it'll just pull out the permissions, or the abstract, or whatever. And so, so this, just these few commands will let somebody that knows nothing about text mining, hopefully, to get from, this is what I want to search for, to getting the actual um, objects they can work with to then do their analysis. Um, so some things I've learned from the full text using the cross of search API is um, that there's not a lot of full text links um, provided. Some publishers do a great job. A few do a good job. A few do an okay job. But the large majority don't provide any. And so lots of pleases and then deposit full text links. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about some a little bit of an analysis of that tomorrow. Um, so a little bit more mining. Um, just one more quick example. Um, let's say we wanted to um, use, so in R there's a client called um, TM, which stands for text mining, and that is used by a lot of people in the R community to do sort of text mining analysis. Uh, in this case, where we're searching for works from Pensoft, which is, so it has member ID 2258. Uh, and then we are saying works equals true. We want to get the works back. And then we're passing that into um, this L apply call, which is kind of like a for loop, which I'm sure most people are familiar with. Uh, and then we're getting some full text links. We're getting uh, the full text back. We're extracting FT extract corpus to extract, extract the corpus. And then we're finding, uh, cert, you know, we're finding uh, the frequent terms in each of the documents and then pulling those out. And so in this bottom result here that I'm scrolling through right now, um, there's, you know, the most frequent terms for 
um, each of those articles that somebody could then use to, to do whatever they want to do with that, some analysis or visualization. Um, now, now moving on to uh, Ruby, uh, the, the um, client uh, Serrano. Um, this is just a brief example, uh, getting the DOI minting agency. So uh, we, you know, once you're in, uh, the Ruby REPL requires Serrano and then Serrano registration agency. And here I'm passing in uh, two DOIs and then we get back some metadata about, about that and we get those, those registration agencies. Um, and now uh, to Python, which is a, a, a client called uh, Habanero. Um, and so here we're getting journal titles for each work. So we say uh, from, in, from Habanero import crossref, um, and we in, instantiate a client crossref, uh, and then we call CR works, and we're searching for um, works um, with the, the term ecology, and then we only want to get full text works, uh, those that have full text links, uh, limiting, it, limiting it to five uh, results. And then we're doing a little bit of um, magic to pull out those actual titles. And so this is just a very brief example to fit on this slide, but you can imagine this is just a few lines of code that you could, somebody could use to pull out, you know, all kinds of data from uh, the Crossref API. Um, and we talked about content negotiation a bit. Uh, here we're doing, we're importing a different module from Habanero, it's called CN, just so you don't have to write out the whole thing, content negotiation. And import CN and then CN, content negotiation, and then we pass a DOI and here we're trying to get back uh, site proc JSON, and so, and and down in the result there is the site proc JSON. So, um, that's that's pretty easy. Um, now, after you've installed the Ruby client, uh, uh, Serrano, once you're on the command line, it, hopefully it will install correctly, and then you execute Serrano, and then you get this help that will list the different. You you probably recognize these methods from the search API. Uh, funders and journals and licenses, and if you execute Serrano help, one of those routes, Serrano help members, you get um, help for what kinds of parameters you can pass into that um, and what you can, and what the results should hopefully look like. And I'm going to go over a few, a few more brief examples before I end of using a command line client. I think the command line client is maybe not used by a lot of people, but I think for the, the tech savvy is, is off to where we go to sort of explore explore data. And so I think this is a pretty powerful powerful use case. Um, so here we're, we're looking for, uh, um, we want to look for data on prefixes, so DOI prefixes. So we say Serrano prefixes, and we pass in two of them, and we get back um, to brief summaries of each of those prefixes, the, the member, the, the name of that member, and then the, the whole URL for that, that prefix. Uh, and then Serrano works, and we pass in a DOI on the bottom example, and then we get back some, some metadata for that DOI. Um, and, and this is trying to follow sort of SiteProc YAML format, so SiteProc JSON, but as YAML, <laughs> slightly, slightly different. Um, and then this is, this is kind of a cool um, use case that uh, for any of, the, any of the routes in this command line client, you can... Um, you can ask for JSON back instead of whatever that sort of default, that brief summary message passed uh, in the last slide. And so you say JSON equals true, and in this case we want to look at works. So we say works equals true um, for the member number 98. And then that little, that horizontal or that vertical um, line is called a pipe. So JSON equals true pipe, and then we're passing that to this other command line tool called JQ, which is a, it's a JSON parser. And so that's a really fast uh, parser for JSON. And then we can do some magic dot brackets message items dot reference count, and that'll pull out all those reference counts. So you can see in this, um, the result there that we got for all those works, I think there's 20 by default. Um, we get back reference counts pretty easily. So, uh, and then, in the bottom example, we want to get back uh, publisher member IDs, uh, and then we can say we want to request Serrano works, and we pass in uh, t two DOIs, JSON equals true, and then uh, we just index to message uh, member, and then we get back the member URLs. Uh, and this is uh, metadata for the talk. Uh, there's the, the link. Uh, 
and some other stuff. And any questions? Or if you want any live coding demos, I can do that. Cool. Thanks very much.